Welcome back to No U-Turn, our trip from Pune to Leh to Srinagar back to Pune. The first part got us till Manali and now we are heading out from Manali to Leh. So it's a cold, rainy morning at Manali and there are different strategies on how you should go out to Rotang, which is our first stop today. Of course, regardless of whether you start in the night, start early morning or start in the evening, traffic is unavoidable. Now, thanks to the locals, you could get some pretty good food and snacks along the way. Now, most of the folks around us are actually headed towards Rotang and very, very few in this line are actually headed beyond. So our destination is going to be Tandi in Himachal Pradesh. Look to the left of your screen, that white line which is winding up the mountains is actually not white with snow, but it is white cars. So that's the kind of traffic we're looking at. We get a chance to break out and here we go. This loaded truck cuts in ahead of me and actually gets himself stuck in the water. It takes some effort to get this guy out, but yes, I'm actually stuck in about a feet and a half of flowing water. But no problem with that, the four-wheel drive to the rescue, pretty effortless getting out of this situation for me. And we chug along. Roads in this part of Himachal Pradesh are not very broad. As you can see, two cars crossing each other and there's hardly any place to drive. On the left is a steep fall all the way down. Alright, but driving here is a joy. The mountains have always had a special place in my heart. As you get away from the cities, you realize that India has so many beautiful places. Just the scenery around us, the snow-capped mountains, beautiful green valleys, and you could compare this to any of the world's top places to visit. As we get closer to Rotang, the terrain changes. The greenery kind of evaporates and the barren mountains come up. As the night falls, Yes, the train becomes a challenge. These roads, thankfully, are functionally maintained by BRO. But yes, there are patches which becomes quite difficult for civilian vehicles. But no challenge for the Scorpio, and we chug along. Night driving out here can be tricky. You do not know where to expect that boulder, or that pothole, or just a steep curve. Because mind it, one side of me is a very steep fall. So we go slowly, and we also have to watch out for the ice. But we reach Rotan and lots of photo opportunities. It is quite windy at the top and of course freezing. These walls of ice are actually 15 to 20 feet high and we have to watch out for the slippery surface as the traffic has gone down. So the water which accumulated has actually frozen. This causes a slip on the tires and this is also called black ice. But the beauty is unparalleled. This is an experience we are never going to forget. As we get out of Rotang and head towards Tandi, the road becomes much better. The Border Road Organization or BRO works around the clock to keep these roads functional and safe at all times. Roughly about 10 in the night, we reach our destination. That is Hotel Tandi Sarai in Tandi. Very, very serene, calm, beautiful place. It's gotten much, much colder than Manali out here. As per the original schedule, we were supposed to head out to Baralaja Pass today. But we were told there's super snowfall happening there, so we had to rest it out at Tandi. So, a little sightseeing. First stop being the Tandi River Sangam, which is the Chandrabhaga Sangam. And some photo opportunities out there. A visit to the local monastery and they showed us artifacts which are more than many centuries old. There's Reshma showing off her riding skills. In the night, Mad About Holidays had arranged a beautiful campfire. So we met up with other travelers, had chats, took photos and it was a great night. Next day, we start off to Barlacha. Now, Barlacha is not fully opened up but we want to take our chances because we're losing time in Dundee and we got to keep to, to our schedule. So we set off. Our first milestone today would be Darcha check post where we, we would find out more about the Barlacha situation. The whole row of 
trucks waiting out there. I think it's Indian oil. They all held up because of the Barlacha snowfall since the last couple of days. I'm excited to see the snowfall, but yeah, we gotta go with the, we go with the flow out here. We gotta wait. All these bikers have been waiting for around three days plus. You see the line of vehicles out here as well. This is a provisional holdup, so that is they didn't want to avoid choke ups at Barlacha. Luckily, we were on our way soon, but only to come to a halt shortly. There's a list of cars that are stranded. Uh, in fact, after that turn that you see right up ahead, uh, some of them have actually turned back. Um, there you see all of them just lined up. Most people come out, uh, spend time on the snow. Um, some have actually used the rocks as and marked them as their personal uh, toilets for today. Uh, but that's how survival is. Uh, but that's the glory and that's the fun and adventure about trips like this. We pulled in our supplies and passed time with fellow travelers from Mad About Holidays. We met up with some really interesting people. The girls would have some fun in the snow. And when you're stuck up in a place like this, you'll do pretty much anything to kill time. Even a flock of sheep is a great photo opportunity. It's now been six hours we are stranded just before Barla Chak. Uh, they opened the pass, they sent about 30 40 cars earlier, uh, just about six hours ago, and we're just about in the same spot. So uh, we just heard that things have started moving. Uh, we're seeing some bikes being let go as a precautionary initial uh, measure and once that is gone then then we'll try and see how the cars move out you see all the line behind me there's our car waiting Reshma is currently resting it out uh, we took a couple of naps to just freshen ourselves uh, and that's about it we're ready uh, we will not give up we're part of no u-turns remember all right then when you get stranded like this you should be concerned about what's the food supply like so it's always advisable that whenever you're going out on trips like this it cannot be predicted when and where you will stall uh, fortunately we were carrying sufficient food of course it's dry snacks but we've uh, made sure we've stuffed ourselves with that and kept our, kept ourselves hydrated so uh, that's very very important stay tuned after many hours of waiting we were allowed to pass, but at our own risk. We were told that it is still snowing on the other side of Barlacha. The roads here have a very different character. Barlacha was beautiful. Fresh snow made the mountains look like as if they were covered with white velvet. It was amazing. But as luck would have it, we couldn't go further than Barlacha and had to return. We would have to stay the night at Zing Zing Bar or go back to Tandi, which given the terrain that we have just come through, will be very, very difficult. It's about 7 p.m. today. We had to stop the night at Zing Zing Park. It's minus 8 to minus 10 and excruciatingly cold. This must take in the back seat. I took the front one, the heater is on. We had to come and crash for the night here, that's the only safe option. All the other co-travelers also opted to stay here instead of going back to Darcha, which is about 30 to 40 kilometers. And yes, it's a morning, sun is lighting up the snow peaks now. We had nice Rajma Chawal and an omelette in a Barlacha cafe. We got the green signal to proceed by BRO at about 2 p.m. that day. This is the second time we were attempting to go across Barlacha in two days. But yes, this time successfully. Due to the unexpected stoppages, we were way off our schedule. Our next step is Sarchu, where we would stay the night.
Morning at Sarchu was most enchanting. When we set off, the golden mountains lit by the morning sun was such a beautiful sight. This is something that we've always dreamt of and we were actually there. We just couldn't believe it. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful And as we proceed further, we are slowly approaching the most amazing place we ever thought existed on earth at that point in time. This is the Pang Valley. I tell you, I have never enjoyed a scenery 360 degrees as much as this one. Pang Valley epitomizes the whole Leh Ladakh trip. As we proceed further, we have another site, Moor Plains. This is where the mountains change their colors with every passing cloud. And then we have the nomad tribes of Debri. This is just superb. Gets better with every kilometer. And soon we are on our way to the world's second highest motorable pass, which is Taglangla. Every turn you take in these mountains gives up a totally different situation, a totally different scenery. And slowly, yes, there we go, Taglangla Pass. There's so much you see and so much you take in all along the ways on trips like this. The mountains are sacred. It pains me to see at times people littering the mountains. So my request to everyone, please keep the mountains and nature clean. Do not litter. We move on towards Leh and then we see first signs of civilization. So after two days of being stuck on the road, spending a day in the car or night in the car and another night at a dhaba, we got ourselves a suite at Shambhala Resort in Leh. So here's the entry. Man, this feels like heaven. That's the bedroom. And look at the view. Awesome view. After the super adventure last two days, we will halt at Leh for a day and recuperate. This is a great resort that we found ourselves at. Some great photo opportunities and the local site visits at Leh. Especially the war memorial, the Hall of Fame, gives you a gist of what our heroes have gone through to give us the security that we enjoy. And some other local monuments in Leh. And it was an amazing experience so far. So stay tuned. This is the end of part two. Part three, we will go up to Srinagar and our journey continues. So do let us know how you like the video with the like and subscribe buttons and the bell icon. But mostly leave your comments. We would love to hear from you. Part three, where we will take this journey from Leh to Srinagar just before we head back to Pune. A big salute to the Indian Army and the Border Roads Organization for enabling all this beautiful access, safety, the Scorpio did an amazing job. It not only conquered flat roads earlier in part one, but in part two, it is the king of the mountains. Sand, sludge, water, snow. It has conquered it all. I'm a proud owner of the Mahindra Scorpio. See you on the other side in part three, where we go all the way to Srinagar. Signing off.